Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the last week lecture, the 8th week lecture, module 8 it is named and uh, the topic we will cover in these two lectures, last two lectures is the membrane analogy for tors torsion problems. So, keeping in mind that uh, let us proceed. Since we have, we have come almost at the end of the course, only one topic is remaining that is the membrane analogy with respect to torsion problem to find out torsional rotation as well as a torsional shear stress developed in a section, irregular section. Those things will come later, but we, before that let us have a recapitulation of what we have done. We have done a history of aircraft and aerospace structural analysis or we can say that it is related to the development of aircraft from the Kitty Hawk site, the 12 second flight from there in 1903, from there we have come to the huge aircrafts we have come to the rotary aircrafts, we have come there are developments in rockets also, but those things we are not going to discuss. Our predominant area of discussion was related to fixed wing aircraft and we have seen how the configuration have configurations have changed uh, from time to time, uh, different types of wing configuration, tail configurations, different types of purpose it serves with those configurations uh, and uh, we have seen that from a very small aircraft may be fitting in a classroom to a an aircraft uh, fitting uh, comfortably fitting in a football field people have developed human men have, have developed society engineers have developed that and those are in service uh, we are being used uh, many aircrafts are there uh, some variation of 737s uh, and 747s are there which are used for firefighting also. Huge quantity of water they carry and um, fire retardant chemicals they carry and spray it on jungle. So, we have seen various developments of uh, aircraft. We have also have gone through to from to through the we have gone through the development of uh, solid mechanics structural analysis from the static analysis, how people have come to the concept of modulus of elasticity, it is constant, how people have come to the com concept of uh, Poisson's ratio. Uh, it was difficult for initially to imagine that uh, for any isotropic material these are the two constants which defines the total material property when we are considering linear elastic region. This again this linear elasticity also they defined and slowly from different experiments uh, related to the beam, it has been uh, done with and then it has gone further in with to the plate and to the cell. We have also seen developments in, in the direction of uh, vibration, but those are not uh, of important in this particular course, but uh, people have developed side, side by side, physicists, scientists have developed side by side. Different equations they have proposed, they have uh, proposed uh, relations for strain and displacement, the famous relations, proposed compatibility equations and from with all those things we are able to design huge aircrafts uh, nowadays, even huge other structures 
that knowledge is very very important unless we develop that insight to a to a analysis it, it is difficult to have a insight in that problem and to solve then uh, various types of external loads uh, and conceptual loads coming to the aircraft structure we have covered a different flight condition which portion of the structure is more prone to experience uh, di certain type of loads uh, some part of fuselage some part of wing some part of tail plane where at which condition they experience what type of load and what should be the critical design condition we have also come across to the uh, agency known as the air worthiness agency and they define and help engineers to design the aircraft uh, according to safety norms and then what we have seen we have seen uh, how the bending moment and shear force uh, are experienced by wing and fuselage we have not come done any combined three dimensional way the shear force bending moment but we have considered in two dimensional manner separately as wing as fuselage we have drawn shear force bending moment diagram with unit load concept so that for any kind of unit load we can solve it before that we have come across to the concept of inertia load and how inertia load is very very important in case of aircraft structures so with those those notes we have come across to the flight envelope for different types of aircrafts how flight envelopes are different and we need to prepare it then uh, three dimensional truss structures we have seen we have solved a few problems related to related to trusses and then uh, we have seen displacement uh, to find out uh, deflection of different uh, structures uh, we started with determinate structure with uh, energy different energy methods <coughs> different energy methods related to um, complementary energy method uh, Castiglianos theorem, unit load method, uh, dummy load method and also we got introduced to a very very important energy ba based solution known as uh, Rayleigh Ridge method. So, after finding out displacement we have started uh, learning theory of elasticity approach, theory of elasticity approach is the mathematical way of uh, of formulating problems and to find out solution for that different stress conditions, strain condition and displacements. So, and there that connection we, we got that for isotropic material there are uh, 15 unknowns to be found out to solve uh, a problem uh, amongst that 6 are stresses, 6 are strains and uh, 3 displacement co components accordingly 15 equations we have found out. In that consequence we have also got introduced to the compatibility condition, compatibility condition is really very important condition we need to maintain while we are formulating a problem, we are trying to define mathematically a problem unless the compatibility is maintained, compatibility means the continuity from point to point, one point to the other in terms of strain or displacement and as well as in terms of stress. So, unless we maintain that in mathematically it will be a mistake because in all physical uh, structure physical world it is always continuous there is no discontinuity like that. So, that concept is introduced. Then uh, we have solved a few problems with inverse semi inverse method we have come got in we got introduced to the concept of stress function. Uh, Eris stress function was introduced and then uh, we solved a, a very typical problem uh, known as the stress concentration on the circumference of a hole if uh, irrespective of the diameter of the hole uh, while uh, the plate is uh, uniaxially loaded with uniform stress. Then from there we have seen that if in even if it is uh, other conditions are there what is the maximum stress may be found out uh, on the circumference of a hole. And then we have uh, learned how a crack propagation may be correlated with elliptical hole and how it can be arrested by drilling a hole. 
After that we have started in last three lectures we have covered uh, the concept of torsion in theory of elasticity approach irregular prismatic sections we have considered not circular sections and then at the end we have come to the circular section also. We got introduced to the free torsion where warping takes place, warping is uh, nothing but the out of plane displacement, uh, the plane here means the plane uh, which rotates, which rotates due to the torsion. So, it is better way to imagine mathematically I, it is difficult to say uh, why without drawing a figure. So, the warping got introduced it is out of plane displacement and then uh, a easy way of uh, finding out um, torsion properties uh, with, sim with respect to the um, membrane stretching to be discussed uh, this, these two lectures in these two lectures. So, with that note uh, let us start that uh, discussion. So, we will be discussing membrane analogy for torsion problem. What is membrane analogy for torsion problem? Uh, if we think uh, about the process first and then if we go to the description it will be much better. What is done that uh, for a regular section uh, may be a rectangle, may be a circle, may be a cylindrical annular cylindrical uh, section or member we can find out uh, torsional rotation and uh, maximum shear stresses to design. But if it is a irregular section say it is a C section, a hat section or a Z section which are very very popular in, in aircraft uh, structures, it is difficult to find out uh, the J effective or the polar moment, moment of inertia effective to find out the torsional maximum shear stress as well as uh, the rotation theta. So, to do that uh, Brandolt introduced some experimental method. What he introduced that if we, if we put um, a put a film uh, on the cross section and if we are able to measure the internal pressure of the film and if we are able to measure the profile of the film then we can correlate that film properties to the torsional properties that is what the membrane analogy. I am talking about film but I am it is written there the membrane that is because the film is considered as membrane. So, in experiment what is done is in general say if it is a C section uh, if we just think of a C section, we consider the C section uh, similar to this and we, we put a this section is generally prepared as hollow, there is nothing is put on this section, it is very very thin wall section generally prepared first and then one rubber membrane is put on top of it and internal pressure is produced. So, because of that if I look from this side what will happen? It will there will be a profile of the rubber sheet something like this here. So, if we are able to measure this profile and we are able to measure the P internal pressure then we can have some correlation. So, since a membrane is used generally for experiment people used to use these things nowadays it is not much used, but uh, why if it is used this way then um, we can find out the maximum shear stress or resultant shear stress at any section as well as we can find out the rotation theta. So, with that concept let us try to have a discussion or have the equations uh, derived the membrane analogy to the torsion problem for irregular shaped bars subjected to torsion the methods so discussed may lead either to unsolvable differential equation or to lengthy approximate methods. For such bars there is an analogy to the torsion problem developed by Prandtl, which uses 
the equations of uniformly stressed membrane subjected to a normal load and which makes possible an experimental solution to the torsion problem. The uh, tors experimental procedure just now I we described that is what is uh, said here, but unless we have the correlation between the, the slope between the slope as well as the pressure and the profile, we would not be able to have a correlation, but before that mathematically we need to have the correlation that is what we will discuss. So, what we are trying to say that uh, there is an element we are considering this is the irregular separate section and it is a part of it as dx dy is considered and uh, it is maybe x direction it may be considered as the y direction z remains same. So, it is there is some internal pressures and because of that international pressure in sorry because of that internal pressure the membrane uh, inflates like this way. So, these are the corners uh, edges of this member this, this this is the edge this is the edge and that edge is this edge. The membrane is stretched over a boundary that conforms to the shape of the bar to be loaded in torsion and is subjected to a normal pressure of P psi. If we write the equilibrium equation of an element we will have as the resultant force in the z direction. So, let us see how do we get it. So, uh, this derivation portion I have skipped I have skipped this portion of derivation. Uh, this is similar derivation with respect to the plate bending. Uh, there are many books which describes the plate bending. So, you can easily have this type of expression considering in plane load. Uh, so, we, we can easily see that, but let us see what the, the concept is for the element dx dy in the direction of x we are considering in this direction this figure may be considered here in that case this is the x direction. The load experienced because of the stretching is minus s del 2 z del x 2 dx dy acting outward acting downward this way it is acting. It is negative because of the negative curvature of the membrane similarly for the y direction the force acting is minus s del 2 z del y 2 dx dy and if we sum it these are in this direction p is in the opposite direction we get the equation as it is given. And from there we can easily come to this solution, but uh, it is reiterated the sign in the equations are correct if we consider s positive in tension and p positive as drawn it is going upward in the direction of z. Since the radius of curvature is negative for the deflection curve as indicated in figure the above equation may be written as it is divided and we get a uh, second order differential equation partial differential equation del 2 z del x 2 plus del 2 z del y 2 is equals to minus of p by s. So, we can have a simple analogy with the equations what we have already derived which can be directly related to the stress function differ, uh, the differential equation. This is where the analogy starts. Okay. So, from this analogy we can easily conclude that P by S is equals to 2 g theta or P by S equals to minus f. So, with it, this conclusion we will use this property later let us proceed further. So, by setting the displacement of the membrane z equal to the stress function phi and constant f equals to minus 2 g, th 2 g theta equal to the pressure tension ratio minus p by s the deflection of the membrane along any contour line is as is constant. So, what is happening if we think of a contour line the irregular shape uh, what we considered uh, that would not give this type of contour line. This type of contour line is generally uh, obtained for a body uh, which is which is uh, may be elliptical in section and then uh, it converges to an ellipse here. 
uh, otherwise there will be um, sharp changes of uh, curve and the contour will be something very symmetric like this. So, but we can imagine a, even a elect elliptical section and we can go for the understanding the deflection of the membrane along any contour line is constant. So, here at particular height may be this height if we consider this it is z is constant. So, that is the reason along this line the s del z del s dz ds is equals to 0. So, which can be related to the stress function. So, we will be substituting z to phi and then we are rewriting the equation in a split manner. So, del phi del x uh, del x del s del phi del x dx ds we are doing plus del phi del y dy ds we can write in a, this way. And then as we have seen earlier this is nothing but minus of t z y and dx ds is there and this is nothing but tau z x this is d y d s and this is equals to 0. So, while we get mathematically this expression this gives us a conclusion in physical manner. What is that conclusion from the stress point of view? Indicates that the projection of any shearing force on the normal to the contour n this is the n to the contour are equals to 0. So, if we consider components of tau z x or tau z y in this direction that is equals to 0. And therefore, the tangent to any membrane contour gives the direction of the resultant shearing stress at that point. So, this the tangent at that point gives us the resultant shearing stress. So, with this conclusion uh, we, we let us see what more we can have analog analogy with this problem and let us see. So, the magnitude of the resultant shearing stress is obtained by projection of the tangent of the stress components. The resultant shearing stress at any point is given by tau is equals to tau z x cos n x minus tau z tau z y cos n x minus tau z x cos n y. So, if you look at it first component is z y this is the n x component here actually the n x is this but a simple correlation if we geometrically if we think this becomes the component. So, accordingly we get that that tau is equals to this value and uh, we get this equation and from there what we can conclude is that we can conclude that cos n x. Uh, so, not conclusion we can observe that cos n x is equals to d x d n where in d n is the unit normal in this direction and this cos n y is equals to d y d n and then if we substitute those values what we can say that this becomes minus of rearrangement at from the conclusion that this is equals to minus d phi d n and which is since phi and z is correlated this way d, this is dz dn. Now, from there what do we conclude magnitude of the shearing stress at any point is represented by the slope of the membrane. That means, if we correspond to this, this slope that is this. So, of the membrane taken perpendicular to the contour line through that point. So, the from the other equations what we have already derived t is equals to twice double integration phi dx dy and that can be easily um, approximated to the volume twice the volume and we have the correlation we conclude that we see that the torsional moment is 
represented by twice the volume under the membrane which conforms to the cross section shape of the bar. So, this is another very very important equation we are going to use. So, with this uh, note uh, we will will come again in the next lecture to find out relations for theta. Uh, two relations we will find already one we have got with respect to uh, theta, but one more we will find out uh, considering the equilibrium in S direction. We, we come to the conclusion of this slide. Uh, this is the standard reference slide and we proceed further uh, to the last slide where it says that we have uh, learned to some extent the membrane analogy method and uh, at the end I thank you for attending this lecture. We will meet again uh, with the next lecture. Thank you.